Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy jig for your miter saw so that you can make these narrow angle cuts like this for making steaks and things like that. So let's get started. So let's have a quick look at the problem. And for a variety of reasons, you may be cutting a, a, a point, say, on a, a square piece of wood. Maybe you're making a stake to drive into the ground. Uh, maybe it's for something on a piece of furniture. And if you go to the table saw, all you can get is like a 45 degree angle. That's the, the, the sharpest you can get on there. But what if you want something really steep? You want something that's a little easier to drive into the ground. Maybe the ground is hard. And of course, a, a much narrower angle like that is much easier to drive into the ground. So how do you do that? Well, the best way, of course, is to come to your sliding miter saw and, you know, you, with this, you could, you could hold it and, and cut that angle and then move it over here and cut that angle. Or you could take the sliding miter and just turn it slightly. But the problem is, as soon as the blade comes down and hits that wood, especially if it's fairly thick like this, and look, there's even some knots in there, what happens is the very first thing that's gonna happen is that blade is going to grab that wood and, and drive it, and it may even drive it up into there. Um, so the whole thing is just a dangerous procedure. So what we're going to make today is a jig to hold this and to still be able to make a cut like this, but to make it safely. So I've gone ahead off camera and cut the three pieces of wood that I need for this jig. This is a thin piece of plywood, a quarter inch. It's 12 inches by 12 inches. I've cut a couple of plywood strips and I've used plywood because it's the most stable. It's not going to tend to want to bend or warp. And it's 14 inches long and two and a half inches, it'll be two and a half inches higher, two and a half inches wide. And this happens to be three quarter inch and it's just some scrap. Now you'll notice that one is a little bit longer than the other, but that's because when I put them together, they'll both stick out past the uh, end of the plywood here by about the same amount. And that's not really critical. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue and nail these on here. And the reason I'm using nails is because, first of all, I don't have to countersink them because this bottom here is going to want to be absolutely flat. And of course, nails are flat. So I'm just going to glue that on there. Okay, I've left a little while for the glue to dry on this new jig, and there's a couple things that you're going to need to use. You're going to need to have some clamps, and I'm, I'm going to be using some C-clamps, and I'm also going to be using these quick-release clamps, and I'll show you in a minute how I'm going to be using them. You may also want to use a sacrificial fence at the back, and that's up to you. I'm not going to use that today, uh, so I'm going to put that off to the side, and all I'm going to do right now is align my fence, and I'm going to use my C-clamps to clamp it to the back fence of the miter saw. I've taken a moment to set the angle of my uh, miter saw at 12 and a half degrees and I've clamped the back of the jig to the machine and I've also made a little mark there that's parallel to the fence so that I can align the tip with that 
because when I start cutting here, I'm not going to be able to align the, the wood as easily. So I'm just going to take a minute now and align that up. And all I need to do is put one clamp. Uh, that will be enough to hold it. And I'm using these quick release clamps. I'll hold that down like that. And we'll go ahead and make that cut. Now you can see that my alignment is off a tiny bit. You can see that uh, two different shades of wood there uh, compared to that side there. And in an ideal world, you can see they would all be perfect. And there's two of them that are perfect. And that's probably because I was able to follow that tip a little more precisely. Now, if this was a stake that you're driving into the ground, it wouldn't matter. But if this was the top of something, maybe a chair that you were putting some um, fine edges on, a, a peak on or something, you would want that to line up. And of course, the ideal way of doing that would be to make some lines using your square all the way around and then making an adjacent line on your jig and then you'd just be able to follow that line every time and you would get uh, a perfect alignment like those. Well, that concludes my video for today. And you know I've had one of these jigs for many years. It seems to have gone missing. Uh, perhaps the jig burglar has taken it. But what I've been doing for some time now, I'm, I'm actually labeling my jigs because I have so many of them and I sometimes I have trouble remembering exactly what they're for. Um, so I'm doing that to keep track of what I've gotten so that I don't take them apart and use them for something else. But this is a nice, quick, easy jig. And you know, it's a good, useful jig too that uh, you'll get lots and lots of years of use out of. I'm Colin Kanat for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.